Hi guys, it's Nikki here again. Um, this week we are going to start a new series um, looking at God's story. Now, over Christmas, um, my family and I had quite a lot of Zoom calls. Um, and one of the things that we like to do as a family over the Zoom calls, instead of just having a chat, we like to do quizzes. Now, I don't know if any of you have done any quizzes on Zoom. Um, perhaps you've done a scavenger hunt, which is always lots of fun, running around and then bringing different objects back to the camera. Um, my little nieces and nephews especially love to play that game. Um, but another quiz that we've really enjoyed is where we've put different kind of images on the screen, either silhouettes or part of an image, and we've had to see if we can guess what the real picture is. Um, and we especially like it if this is Disney characters. So I've got an example now. I wonder if you can tell who this is. Or I wonder if you can tell who this one is. I'm sure that you're all shouting at the screen and it's really obvious. That's right, they are Woody and Buzz from Toy Story. Um, really famous characters there. And I don't know if you have seen, there's now four Toy Story movies, I can't really believe it. Um, but if you can remember back to any of you who've watched Toy Story 2, it's a really interesting story because at the beginning, it starts off with quite an exciting, tense scene. Buzz is careering down out of space. He lands and he has to go and fight this, um, the baddie, this evil, and it's, all and it's all really exciting and you're wondering what's gonna happen. It's quite high tension. And then suddenly it cuts to Andy's bedroom and it turns out that it's not Buzz fighting his enemy. It's actually Rex on a computer screen playing a computer game. And it's actually quite ordinary. There's a lot of toys in Andy's bedroom and everything is really quite ordinary. It's just a normal boy's bedroom with toys and there's a few scattered about. Um, and it's kind of before the real action begins. And sometimes at the beginning of a new year, that's what our life can feel like. We're at the beginning. It's quite exciting because we don't know what's ahead. But on the other hand, it's quite ordinary and it can feel a bit flat. And I thought, what has this got to do with the Bible and where I'm going to go with this story? But I thought it's a bit like what life was like right in the very beginning. And I wonder if any of you know what the very first book of the Bible is called. You're right, it's Genesis. And that's where we're going to start the beginning of this series. And we're going to spend most of the next five weeks up to half term in Genesis. And there are loads of exciting stories in Genesis. Noah's Ark, the flood, and then being rescued and saved on the, on the ark and then the rainbow at the end of it all. Then there's the stories of Moses and the Egyptians and the plagues and where the parting of the Red Sea. And then there's the story of Joseph. Some of you all know that with his brightly coloured coat or it might have been plain white. Who knows? Um, but there are loads of really exciting stories in Genesis. But before we get to any of that, right at the very beginning, it says these words. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So in the very beginning, the earth had, was said was formless. That means it had no shape. It was a bit like this lump of Play-Doh. Now, in your jam packs, you should have had a lump of Play-Doh. You, you might have had a brightly coloured green one, or you might have had something that looks a bit like this, or maybe a little bit of both. And this looks pretty boring. It's got no shape, it's just a blob. And I imagine that that's a bit like what the Earth was like. But that verse also said something really important. It said, The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And whenever God's spirit is there, we know something exciting is about to happen. And if we read Genesis, it tells us what happened next. This is what it says. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was barren with no form of life. 
it was under a roaring ocean covered with darkness. But the Spirit of God was moving over the water. God said, I command light to shine. And light started shining. God looked at the light and saw that it was good. He separated light from darkness and named the light day and the darkness night. Evening came and then morning and that was the first day. God said, I command a dome to separate the water above from the water below. And that's what happened. God made the sky. Evening came and morning came. That was the second day. God said, I command the water under the sky to come together in one place so that there will be dry ground. And that's what happened. God named the dry ground land and he named the water ocean. God looked at what he had done and saw that it was good. Then God said, I command the earth to produce all kinds of plants, including fruit trees and grain. And that is what has happened. The earth produced all kinds of vegetation. God looked at what he had done and it was good. Evening came and then morning. That was the third day. Then God said, I command lights to appear in the sky and to separate day from night and to show the time for seasons, special days and years. I command them to shine on the earth. And that's what, ga what happened. God made two powerful lights, the brighter one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. He also made the stars. Then God put these lights in the sky to shine on the earth to rule the day and night and to separate light from darkness. God looked at what he had done and it was good. Evening came and then morning and that was the fourth day. God said, I command the ocean to be full of living creatures and I command birds to fly above the earth. So God made the giant sea monsters and all the living creatures that swim in the ocean. He also made every kind of bird. God looked at what he had done and it was good. Then he gave the living creatures his blessing. He told the ocean creatures to live everywhere in the ocean and the birds to live everywhere in the earth. Evening came and then morning and that was the fifth day. God said, I command the earth to give life to all kinds of tame animals, wild animals and reptiles. And that's what happened. God made every one of them. Then he looked at what he had done and it was good. God said, now we will make humans and they will be like us. We will let them rule the fish, the birds and all the other living creatures. So God created humans to be like himself. He made men and women. God gave them his blessing and said, have lots of children, fill the earth with people and bring it under your control. Rule over the fish in the ocean, the birds in the sky and every animal on the earth. I've provided all kinds of fruit and grain for you to eat. And I've given the green plants as food for everything else that breathes. These will be, be the food for animals, both wild and tame, and for birds. God looked at what he had done, and all of it was very good. Evening came, and then morning. That was the sixth day. So the heavens and the earth and everything else were created. By the seventh day, God had finished his work, and so he rested. God blessed the seventh day and made it special, because on that day he rested from his work. That's how God created the heavens and the earth. So that's amazing, isn't it? In just that first chapter of Genesis, in just a, really a few verses, the Bible explains all about how God went from a formless, empty blob and by his spirit hovering over it, created everything. Created stars, the sun, the moon, the sea, the land, plants, birds, fish and us, humans. How amazing is that? 
And sometimes our life can feel a bit like this formless empty blob. Like I just said, at the beginning of a new year, we don't know where it's going and we don't know what God has in store. But we can be pretty sure that with God's spirit hovering over us, if we let him, we can become whatever he has planned for us. We can become something amazing. All we have to do is let him work in our lives and we can be, we can become what he has planned. Some, there's a big word, a fancy word we call destiny. And sometimes that's what we talk about is where we allow God to fulfill his plans for us in our lives. And I believe God has something really exciting planned for each one of you, not just this year, but for the rest of your lives. If you'll let him work with your life in your life. So I'm going to say a prayer for us now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have plans for us and that you want to work in our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I ask, Lord Jesus, at the start of this new year, that we will let you work in our lives and that we will trust you in whatever lies ahead. Amen. That's all for today. Um, also, just to let you know, there is a story that's going to run alongside the God Slots each week, um, which is the story of Carlos. Um, it's going to be in parts, and this week's part will just be the introduction, like we've had the introduction to some of the other things. Um, if you want to wait till week five, you can watch them all in one go. Or if you can't wait, you can watch the first part now and wait for next week when you'll get the second instalment. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye.